Making America Great Again is looking a lot like America going it alone these days. As of Friday, steel and aluminum tariffs will have been imposed on its neighbors Canada and Mexico, its biggest allies in the European Union, Japan, and its single biggest trading partner, China. A necessary approach, says the U.S. Commerce Secretary, to address a global problem. There's overproduction of steel and there's overcapacity throughout the world. And so we have needed to deal with it in a very global manner. You can't just deal with it dealing with one country. Washington's trading partners object on the grounds that this violates World Trade Organization protocols. The U.S. has justified its unilateral actions using a Cold War era law written to protect U.S. national security, not specific American industries. The effects are already being felt. Steel prices have been rising in global markets and the uncertainty is roiling global stock markets. The U.S. Commerce Secretary, however, is downplaying the economic consequences of this decision. Even if the EU does retaliate and even if some others do, it still will remain unlikely to be as much as 1% on our economy. Remember, just because they put tariffs on some of our products, it doesn't mean those sales will go to zero. And in the case of agriculture, they may very well find other markets that are just as good. U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross may be calm, but the leaders of some U.S. industries are not. They fear that retaliation from some of the U.S.'s biggest trading partners may hit other industries that have nothing to do with steel or aluminum, potentially harming the U.S. economy far more than helping it over steel and aluminum. Nathan King, CGTN at the White House.